Greetings, this is the wee hours of August 15th, and we're looking at the Begbie Cam on Dry BC, a little bit of haze in the air, and it's a quiet evening. Uh, there's a lot of smoke around, and the winds aren't moving very fast. They're kind of swirling around. Some are coming from the west, some are coming from the south. But this is a good time in the evening, uh, early morning, to check the uh, RSAC radiative scan because there's so much data on that uh, Google Earth KML. Sometimes it just crashes my version of Google Earth. So let's isolate some target areas on BC's wildfire service map. I'm looking at three dots uh, just left of center on the screen. These are new strikes or new outbreaks of fire. The first one, uh, there's not a cause indicated yet. It's less than a hectare and it's approximately five kilometers east of Chilcotin Lake. The second one is seven kilometers south of Alexis Lake. The cause is indicated as lightning and it's already 70 hectares in size. The third one has also been caused by lightning south of Bull Canyon and the size is indicated as five hectares. There's also a fourth one. Uh, it's three kilometers from Forest Grove. The cause was lightning and it's still less than a hectare. And this fire was discovered on the 13th. All of these fires are indicated by symbols on the NRC data, but they're not showing up on infrared on this M3 system, uh, nor the MODIS uh, systems. Part of the reason could be this dense smoke the sensors might not be picking up all the data that we'd prefer to have. Let's jump to the RSAC VIRS data and it's showing more infrared in the radiative scan than some of the other systems. First off we'll take a look near Forest Grove and on the radiative scan no data is coming up for that one. This could be a good sign that it's being suppressed or it could be obscured. Let's go back and look at the three west of Highway 97. And yes, there is a one fire indicated with infrared. It appears to be perhaps the Alexis fire. That's the one that's uh, over 70 hectares. And the fire that's indicated just to the right of center of your screen, that's the fire that's burning south of Williams Lake right now. But we're gonna pull back and take a look at the Wild Goose Lake fire that's the large patch of infrared on the left of your screen. The Wild Goose Lake fire has experienced some growth. It's sitting over 7,000 hectares at this point. Then the Twin Creek fire, that's the one just east of 70 Mile House, that's up almost 600 hectares. And then the Young Lake fire is about 245 hectares. Keep in mind we are looking at active infrared not the burned areas. Uh, the perimeters aren't indicated on this map. I'm going to zoom into the Twin Creek fire that's uh, approximately 10 to 15 kilometers southeast of 70 Mile House, east of the chasm. Uh, this has been called 90% contained. It was running adjacent to the Elephant Hill wildfire and I think its uh, development was limited. I'm going to click on one of those red dots along the southern flank on the southern perimeter of this uh, fire just so you can see how much energy is being emitted. One red square is representing 718 megawatts. I'll take a look for a scale to see how much that could power, like how many neighborhoods or how many households, and post it in the comments if I find out. Let's jump over to Windy now and see if we can find out where the wind is encouraging some of these fires to travel. At Wild Goose Lake, uh, wind is coming from the west at seven kilometers an hour, and it, we're seeing increased velocities on the higher edges, the ridge lines, the plateaus. That's where the wind can pick up some speed down in the valleys. It's moving a lot slower. Uh, it might not even be, a, to be moving at all. 
at the Twin Creek Fire southeast of 70 miles, 7 kilometers an hour, and it's moving from the northwest and then uh, gets down to the Bonaparte and starts bending back up north again. And finally, Young Lake is moving at 6 kilometers an hour from the south. Uh, there's variation as it goes through the Bonaparte Valley and it comes up the Dead Man River canyons. Everywhere the wind is a little bit different, uh, very localized. Looking at the forecast uh, from the Clinton 70 Mile House region, uh, very low wind speeds throughout the day. There may be some gusts up around 20 kilometers an hour as you get to that three o'clock breeze and uh, temperatures may start reaching into the 30s again. So slow doldrums, dog days of summer, and uh, hopefully you can find some relief from all that haze in the air. Again, we were just looking at the Big B Cam. So uh, still active wildfire season. Be prepared in case new oxygen, new winds come in and they uh, stoke up some of these fires. But the crews have been doing really well and knocking back these uh, lightning strikes and keeping a handle on some of these larger fires, especially when they're around built up or populated areas. So kudos to them. Uh, be safe out there. Uh, know where your uh, roots are gonna be. Know what your resources are that you're gonna need and keep your nose to the breeze. Thank you very much for watching.